So if you've been looking at getting into photography or videography, you're probably looking at a couple of beginner cameras. That might be something like the Sony ZV-E10, a great little budget vlogging camera, or the Sony A6700, a more expensive but fantastic hybrid camera. And the question is, if you're looking between these two cameras, which one should you get? So the Sony a6700 and the Sony ZV-E10 are both fantastic uh, kind of beginner style cameras, one being more beginner than the other, we're going to get into that in a second, and they both have their own strengths and weaknesses. First off, let's talk about what is similar between these two cameras. First off, uh, they both have a Sony E-mount, they're made by Sony, so they use the same lenses, um, and they're both APS-C. What that means is that they have a smaller size sensor than some of the more high-end professional uh, hybrid cameras that you'll see out there which are full frame. So APS-C is still a fantastic option, can still produce an amazing quality image. Um, and honestly, a lot of people probably can't tell the difference unless they're really into their camera stuff. Obviously they can both film in 4K and 1080p, um, but the Sony a6700 has a way more features than the Sony ZV-E10 but there is a pretty dramatic price difference between the two. So real quick, let's break down a couple of differences between these two cameras. Okay, so first off, they have different batteries. The Sony ZV-E10 has these small NPW50 batteries. They last for about an hour. They're not very good, but they're small um, and they're easy to carry around and keeps the size of the camera a lot smaller. Whereas the Sony a6700 has the newer NPF Z100 battery. So this is a lot larger, has much higher capacity and lasts for I don't know, two and a half hours or so, depending on your usage. Um, so you'll get a lot more battery life from the A6700 than you will in the Sony ZV-E10. Secondly, one of the big differences, especially for photographers, is that the Sony A6700 has a viewfinder. So if you're a photographer more than videographer, you've got your little viewfinder that you can look through, which will help you for taking photos. The ZV-E10 is more designed for vloggers and primarily for video. So it doesn't actually have that. That's one of the areas that they were able to save money. There's no EVF. So you're gonna have to rely on the screen completely. Third, let's talk about buttons. The Sony ZV-E10 has an incredibly simple layout, and that's often a very good thing. If you're new to photography and videography, um, or to new to cameras in general, there's a lot less going on on the camera body, which and it just makes things a lot simpler. Um, on the flip side of that, if you're a little bit more adept in how to use the camera, the Sony A6700 has tons of dials, and um, it's got three wheels that you can use for dialing in all of your settings. It's got lots of, uh, it's got manual modes, auto mode, all that kind of stuff built right onto the camera body. Um, and tons of custom buttons that you can program to do whatever you want. And the last main difference that we're going to talk about is just image quality. I'm mainly going to be talking about this for video because um, photography wise, they're both pretty good. The A6700 is going to be better. It's, it's newer, it's got better autofocus, it's got a higher megapixel count, all those kinds of things. But one of the primary differences, especially when it comes to videography, is that this camera, the Sony A6700, can not only, only film in 4K in slow motion, like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, but it also can film in 10-bit. Now, the difference between 10-bit and 8-bit is basically that the 10-bit the file is going to be larger, but it captures a lot more data, which means that you can play around with the colors, you can, you can do a little bit more with it. It's going to be a little bit more detailed and have a lot more information in the file itself. Now, that doesn't mean that 8-bit is bad. You can still get by with 8-bit. Um, you can, you, a lot of cameras up until recently have been using 8-bit for a long time. And a lot of the stuff that you've seen on YouTube within the last five years or so was probably all filmed on 8-bit. So it's not that 8-bit is bad, it just means that 10-bit is better. Now, both of these cameras can film in log, and what that means is it sort of desaturates your image, which allows you to play around with the colors a whole lot more and do more with it. But again, coming with that 10-bit color, I would recommend filming in log on the A6700. But in the ZV-E10, it's easier to just stick with the standard picture profile or maybe HLG so that you can play around with the colors a little bit. But if you're filming an S-Log3 on this thing, the color will start to fall apart pretty badly. Um, just something to keep in mind. Now, you might be saying to yourself, okay, if this is a comparison, so far the Sony ZV-E10 has really nothing going for it. Well, let's talk about a couple of positives that you can get with this camera. First off, the clear and obvious thing is the price. This camera you can find used for $500 to maybe $600. Um, new, I think it's $650 or $680, somewhere around there. So it's, it's very affordable. So if you're wanting to get into photography and videography at the lowest price possible, and with a camera that's very easy to use, this is the camera to go for. Not everybody looking to get into photography, videography, YouTube, all that kind of stuff is looking for, you know, 10-bit 422, you know, external raw recording. Like, you know, some people aren't looking for that. Some people are looking for a simple pick it up, hit a button, start recording, and you just want something just a little better than a phone. 
this is going to be fantastic for you. If you're a beginner, you don't want to have to learn the ins and outs of a camera, but you want to just do it for you, I'd recommend the ZV-E10. So the price paired with just how easy it is to use and how fun it is to use is, is a great thing. Now, the last reason you might want to pick up a camera like this over the A6700 is if you're doing something more dangerous, right? So if you're like, for example, this evening we're going sledding because it's been snowing outside um, and I want to film it, but I don't want to risk damaging my A6700 or my FX30. So if I were to fall off and, you know, break a camera, I would rather break a $600 camera than a $1,400 or a $2,000 camera. So those are a few of the reasons why you might want to pick up the Sony ZV-E10. As for the Sony A6700, this is definitely going to be far better for people who are really going to be considering making money with their camera. Um, they're wanting a little bit more professionalism with their camera. Um, you know, you've got that 10-bit quality video, you've got fantastic photo quality, you've got your EVF, you've got a whole bunch of features. It's got more features in this camera than the a7 IV does. The only difference is it's got the APS-C sensor and it's like a thousand dollars cheaper. So to me, it's, this is like one of the best cameras you can get. The only downsides to this camera for professionals would be that it only has one SD card slot. Um, and for video, if you're filming uh, in you know 4K 120 for a really long period of time, maybe if you're filming sports or something like that, there really aren't a whole lot of people that need that. Um, it might overheat, that can happen sometimes, but if you're a professional videographer um, and you're really concerned about those sorts of things, just go for the FX30. It's going to be a better camera for you. But if you're looking for something hybrid that's still small, compact, and can get incredible image quality for only about $1,400, this is the camera to go for. The Sony A6700 has really blown me away. I really didn't expect to fall in love with this camera as much as I did. I love the Sony ZV-10. It was just a really fun camera. It's incredibly popular on YouTube. So if you're a YouTuber and you want to talk about cameras, uh, talking about this camera is actually really popular because a lot of people have it. Um, but uh, the Sony A6700 has just been so much fun. I've really loved the image that comes out of this. The usability, uh, the 10-bit the is actually great. It really is nice to be able to push the colors around and not worry about any artifacts or things going on between like some color bleeding and stuff like that. So if you're willing to really learn a camera, right, you want to get the most out of your camera and you're willing to put in the work to learn something and you're invested in gear, the Sony a6700 is by far a much better camera than, than the Sony ZV-E10. But if you're just a beginner, you don't care that much about camera gear and you just want to get easy, good image quality, the ZV-E10 is the way to go. I think a lot of people are pressured into spending thousands of dollars on a camera to get really high quality video. You don't really need that these days. This thing can get fantastic image quality for not very much work um, and for a much lower amount of money. And I would argue that if you're just, if you're going to stick both of these cameras in auto just to capture whatever you can, just go with the ZV-10. Um, the image quality out of them is going to be very similar. But if you plan on putting a lot of work into your footage, if you plan on dialing in all of your settings manually, you plan on doing a lot of color grading, the Sony A6700 is the way to go. But I want to know what you think. Are you a gearhead? You just want to be able to dial in all your settings and, and customize every single button that your camera has to be able to do whatever you want it to do? Or are you like, I just want to be able to hit record, pull, you know, pull out the camera, hit record, and just film something and upload it immediately? What type of use case are you using your camera for? Because that's going to very much dictate what kind of camera that you want to get. The Sony ZV-10 is not a bad camera. Just because the A6700 is better doesn't make this bad. It just means that this one's better, but it's, it's it should be for double the price. So ultimately, it's up to you. Whatever you, what works within your budget, go with that. There's no point in spending more money than you need to to get the kind of quality that you want to get. And that's so important when it comes to buying camera gears. A lot of people on YouTube are pushing you to get the $4,000 cameras or, you know, you should buy the Sony A9 III because it's got a global shutter. Just look at what it is that you're filming, look at your budget and figure out what you can get within the budget. The camera body is one small part of what you need to get a fantastic image. We haven't even talked about lenses, lighting, filters, uh, audio, all that kind of stuff. So make sure that whenever you're looking at purchasing a camera like a, like a ZV-10 or an A6700, that you have the budget to add everything that you need to add to get the most out of your cameras. So that's all I got. I hope this video has been helpful to you. It's a pretty quick one today. If you've enjoyed it, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, and maybe even subscribe as we continue to build this channel. I appreciate all of you for doing so, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.